Hello everybody, this is session 6 of course material 101 via MATLAB. I'm Arash and today we're going to talk about non-overlapping spherical beds. So in the previous session we have talked about the overlapping spherical beds which are pretty much simple to implement. I've converted that piece of code in the previous session into a simple function and I will go like this. So if I say OV the spheres and then show the volume of matrix A so this is the result as you can see there are spheres but they're somehow overlapping with each other okay so uh, right now if we wanted to avoid them to overlap it will take some bit of work to do that Okay, so I'm going to basically copy and paste the piece of code we have developed in the previous session. It's something like this. So we have the size of our geometry and then number of the spheres we want to put inside the geometry and the radius. And then we use a set of random points and then calculating the Euclidean distance, thresholding, that map and then visualizing the geometry. Okay, so the only change in this session is that we don't want this line of the code that will randomly select some points because those points may be pretty much close to each other that will make this overlapping issue. We know that in reality, probably these spheres won't overlap unless they have been some sort of melted or something like that or be elastic but if they are solid particles they probably won't overlap so we just get rid of this line of the code and we're gonna use an algorithm to avoid those overlap this algorithm works like this so first we create a large list of different sphere centers and then we go through that list and we find the points which are pretty much close to each other and then we measure those points to get rid of those overlapping problems okay in order to do that uh, first we need to uh, create a list of points like this these are n random points inside that geometry showing by their indices and generated by using grand i function and then uh, we need to convert these indices into subscripts in x and y and z coordinates so in order to calculate the distances we put all these x y and z coordinates inside a unified array we call it c which shows the centers of those spheres and then we are going to use a y, y, y loop in order to go through all different rows of these and see array and check if they're very close to each other or they are not so we initialize the counter of the loop and then we say start from zero and go to the size of this uh, array which shows the maximum number of points okay and then inside this loop first we increase the, the value of our counter and then we need to calculate the distance between each of these spheres to the rest of the spheres so we go like this I just simply typed out these lines to save some time so here as you can see we are using this C array to calculate the distance of its points to the repeated matrix of that specific line of C so we take the I th line of this C array and then uh, we repeat that array to be this in the same size 
the array itself. So then we calculate the distance between each of these centers to that specific point that we want. And then uh, after calculating these distances, we just need to check that which of them are pretty much close to this specific I point. So in order to do that, we are using this uh, find function of MATLAB. And in order to do that, we say that if this is smaller than the two times of radius, just put the indices of that uh, sphere inside this NI, NEIG array. And you see uh, two times of the radius, it's actually the threshold of being overlapped or not. So if the distance is smaller than two times of the radius, it means that those points are pretty much close to each other. And we need to remove those points from our structure. But first of all, we need to ignore the point itself because as you can see, the point itself, it has the minimum distance with itself but it doesn't have any meaning. So we simply using set diff to remove that point itself from the list. And then uh, we check also if a point is pretty much lonely and it doesn't have any neighbors, it means if the size of the neighbors is zero. So continue and go to the uh, next round of this while loop. And then when it found some neighbors, which are pretty much close to each other, it will go and use main function to actually measure this point. So it, it calculates the average of the coordinates of all these neighboring, you know, voxels and then round it to be integer, which is well voxel friendly. So we actually, we are updating this uh, a C array each time in this while loop and then finally we are going to remove this neighbor list from our uh, C array so each time we are moving inside this while loop our C array will become smaller and smaller and those points which are pretty close to each other will be merged into a single point so by doing this, this C array is finally updated and we are just needed to convert these coordinates into indices. Like this using sub to int commands of MATLAB. We used S, the size of the original array and these coordinates which are stored in array C. And then we can simply say that, hey, just use this indices inside array A and put all of them equal to 1 and do the rest of the thing by calculating the Euclidean distance and thresholding the value. So if I run this M file, this is the result. As you can see, we have several spheres and they are not overlapping, Yeah, as you can see. But the point is that probably the number of these spheres are pretty much smaller than uh, 500 right now I can say okay it's 76 spheres here but the point is that it's it's inevitable that you will probably lose some of the points because maybe it's not geometrically possible to put all those spheres with radius of 10 inside this small 100 cube matrix so if right now I increase this number to, for example, 2000, you will see the number of spheres are almost increasing. But if you wanted to reach a lower porosity, it would be very computationally expensive to try out every different possible location and um, find the smallest possible porosity for this sort of packings which probably is not less than 30 to 40 percent probably yeah thank you very much everybody for uh, watching this session i hope that it was useful for you thank you very much and see you in the next session bye